this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with Greek Lemon Chicken and Potatoes. That's right, I've never catered to anyone's big fat Greek wedding, but if I did, I'd probably serve this. Not only is it easy to make and incredibly delicious, chicken and potatoes are pretty cheap. So not only would everybody love it, it would be pretty profitable. But happily, I do not cater. Instead, I do whatever this is. But anyway, let's go ahead and get started. And in the words of the Greek philosopher Plato, the beginning is the most important part of the work. And that is certainly true with this recipe. So what we want to do first is put our chicken pieces in a mixing bowl. And what I have here is one whole chicken cut into sections. And as amazing as this came out, ideally you're going to use all dark meat for this. And I'll go over that on the blog post. But thigh and leg sections work even better in this recipe. But alas, I had a whole chicken, so that's what I used. Did I just say alas? But anyway, no matter which chicken parts you're using, what we need to do is season them up generously. So we'll start with a whole bunch of kosher salt, followed by some freshly ground black pepper, and then we'll do some dry herb. We'll do a little bit of rosemary and a whole bunch of dry oregano. And because someone will ask, of course you could use fresh herbs in this. But this is one of those recipes where the dry herb just works better. We're also going to want to do a little bit of cayenne, as well as a fair amount of minced garlic. And then we'll finish off what's basically a marinade with some freshly squeezed lemon juice. And I repeat, freshly squeezed, as well as an equally large amount of olive oil, preferably Greek. And that is pretty much it. So at this point, if we were just roasting chicken, we'd mix this up and proceed. But we're not. We're doing chicken and potatoes. So at this point, we're going to introduce some peeled and quartered russet potatoes. Yukon gold are also nice in this. But personally, I'd stay away from the waxy potatoes like the red ones. Those don't seem to work quite as well. And once those are in, we want to give everything a thorough mixing, but not with a spatula. Please use your hand for this. Actually, use both hands for this. But because I'm always trying to keep my camera free of deadly chicken juices, I went with a spatula, and it was as annoying as it was time consuming. But eventually I got it mixed, and once it is mixed, you can let this sit in the fridge for a couple hours if you want, which seems to be a popular option. Or if you want, you could cook this right away, which is what I'm doing, and it still comes out incredibly good. So let's go ahead and transfer this into a lightly oiled, large roasting pan. And I generally like to place the chicken in first, skin side up, and I'll make sure those pieces are nicely distributed before filling in the blanks with our potatoes. And by the way, do not discard any of the marinade. We're gonna spoon that over in a minute. But before we do an incredibly important step, we're gonna drizzle in about a half a cup of chicken broth or water, which is gonna prevent the lemon and garlic from burning onto the bottom of the pan. It's all right if that stuff caramelizes onto the top of the chicken, but if all that stuff blackens to the bottom of the pan, when we serve this with the pan drippings later, it's not gonna have that beautiful fresh lemon herb flavor we really want. So we'll pour in a little bit of broth, at which point we'll spoon the rest of the marinade over the chicken pieces. And not just the chicken pieces, you wanna spoon a little bit over the potatoes too. And once that's been done, this is ready for the oven. So let's go ahead and transfer this into the center of a 425 degree oven for about 45 minutes or so, or until the chicken is cooked through. And what we wanna do after about 20 minutes is pull it out and give these pieces of chicken and potato a little toss in the sauce. And please note, we're just tossing, we're not flipping. Okay, we still wanna end up with the skin side still up. And by the way, you can do this three or four times during the cooking process if you want. I just did it once, but feel free to do this another couple times if you want. And once that's been accomplished, we'll go ahead and pop that back in and continue until the chicken is beautifully browned and cooked through, which is what I'm looking at right here. And we could at this point serve this as is. It would be magnificent. But we want to make this even more incredible. Hey, come on, we're trying to make the Pantheon. So what we'll do is we'll transfer our chicken to our serving platter and keep that warm for a minute. Because what we want to do is switch our oven onto broil or up to the highest heat setting you have. And we'll give those potatoes one more toss in that goodness. And then we'll toss those back in the oven or under the broiler for a couple minutes to finish the crustification. And not only is that going to put those potatoes over the top texturally, it's also helped to continue caramelizing all that deliciousness in the bottom of the pan, which of course we're going to utilize. So at this point, we can add our now perfect potatoes to our chicken pieces. And then all we're going to do to finish this off is add a splash of water or chicken broth to the roasting pan to sort of dissolve and loosen up all that goodness, which we will then strain and spoon over our chicken and potatoes. And by the way, if you want, you can put your flame on like medium here just to keep everything nice and hot while you're doing this. And of course, you could taste for seasoning at this point. You might need a little more salt, but I predict it's going to be perfect. And once that's set, like I said, we're going to strain it and spoon it over our platter. And then we'll finish off with just a little bit of freshly chopped oregano, if you have some. And my version of Greek lemon chicken and potatoes is done. And I'll admit it right now, the chicken is really just an excuse so I can enjoy these potatoes. With that brown crusty surface outside, and then that soft creamy delicious inside, which is soaked in all that flavor from the chicken and the herbs and the lemon and the garlic. 
And while the potatoes are my favorite, the chicken is equally delicious. In fact, I'm going to take a bite from what would be the driest, most overcooked part, that little piece of white meat from the breast still attached to the wing. And even that piece was moist, tender, and incredibly tasty. But anyway, let's plate this up properly. That was just a little tease. Although, since this is Greek food, I believe it's referred to as a Socrates. But anyway, like I said, let's plate this up for the official taste. And while I usually enjoy as is with just a little bit of those pan drippings over the top, if you're in the mood, some kind of cold yogurt sauce is also very nice served with this. All right, I had a little bit of tzatziki sauce from some leftover takeout, so I spooned a little bit of that over. But just a little bit of Greek yogurt with some garlic in it would also be nice. So that's totally optional and up to you. You are the Plato of your plate, bro. So that's for you to decide. But no matter how you serve it, I think you'll find this to be one of the most delicious roast chicken and potato recipes you've ever tasted. So simple, so satisfying, and so delicious that usually when people learn how to make this, they don't just make it once. They make it like once a week for the rest of their lives. It's that good. So I really do hope you give this a try. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.